In this video, I'll take you through the diseases you need to think of when a patient presents with chest pain. First, let's talk about aortic dissection. In this condition, there is a tear in the tunica intima of the aorta forming a false lumen. Tunica intima is the innermost lining of the wall of aorta and the tear in the wall causes blood to seep between the tunica intima and tunica media. This life-threatening condition can occur in patients with uncontrolled hypertension. Symptoms of aortic dissection include a sudden severe tearing chest pain radiating to the back, as well as symptoms of hypotension and shock. Location of the severe pain can differ and depends on where in the aorta does the tear occur. If the tear is in the ascending aorta, the pain is felt on the anterior chest. Dissections originating in the aortic arch start as neck pain, whereas those in the descending aorta can start as shoulder pain or interscapular pain. To diagnose this condition, a chest x-ray done initially will reveal a widened mediastinum due to the dissection. A CT aortogram is done to confirm the diagnosis and pinpoint the location of dissection in the aorta. There is the risk of missing the diagnosis entirely due to its similarity to angina or myocardial infarction. However, this disease can be immediately life-threatening and prompt diagnosis is necessary to improve chances of survival. Next on our list is the most common cardiac cause of chest pain, which is myocardial ischemia. Myocardial ischemia refers to lack of blood supply to heart muscles and occurs due to a blockage of coronary arteries supplying blood to the heart muscles, a process called atherosclerosis. In atherosclerosis, an atheroma builds up in the coronary artery over many years, consisting of fat, cholesterol, and fibrous tissue. There are many risk factors involved, but the most common modifiable ones are diabetes, smoking, obesity, hypertension, and high cholesterol. At first, this leads to angina, in which the patient feels pain or discomfort just behind the sternum, which radiates to the neck, jaw, or the left arm. This is initially stable, occurring only on exertion and relieving at rest, but it can progress to unstable angina, which occurs even at rest. This can also worsen to a myocardial infarction, the dreaded heart attack. In myocardial infarction, the chest pain is similar but lasts for longer than 20 minutes. The pain is also associated with nausea, vomiting, and sweating. To diagnose an MI, the quickest tool that we have is an ECG, which reveals changes in the heart rhythm, such as elevation of the ST segment. We must bear in mind that there are two types of MI, STEMI, short for ST elevation myocardial infarction, and NSTEMI, short for non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, which is why we can't rely only on ECG changes and look for raised cardiac marker levels in the serum. The most sensitive and widely tested cardiac marker is troponin T. Serial testing of troponin T levels is done to rule out myocardial infarction with up to three times in six hour intervals. It is important to know that troponin T levels become detectable within two hours of the MI and remain raised for up to one week post-MI. The last cardiac cause of chest pain that we'll talk about is pericarditis, in which there is inflammation of the pericardium that covers the heart. This can also lead to buildup of extra fluid in the pericardial space, known as pericardial effusion. Pericarditis is usually either idiopathic or due to a viral infection. The sharp pain felt in the chest due to pericarditis is related to position and is characteristically relieved when leaning forward. If viral infection is the cause, the patient would also present with fever. Pericarditis can be diagnosed with a chest x-ray or echocardiography, which reveals an enlarged heart. In the chest x-ray, it is classically known as the water bottle sign. Now that we're done with cardiac causes of chest pain, we'll move on to non-cardiac causes. The first one being pleurisy or pleuritic pain. This can be best described as a sharp chest pain made worse by deep breaths or coughing. The most common disease associated with pleuritic pain is pneumonia, a 
a chest infection caused by viruses such as influenza or various bacteria. The more common bacteria include Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, and Staphylococcus aureus. Patients with pneumonia will also present with a productive cough, fever, and difficulty breathing. Initial diagnosis of pneumonia can be made on a chest X-ray, which may reveal a consolidated lobe, as seen here, or patchy areas of consolidation. Another cause of pleuritic chest pain is pulmonary embolism, which occurs due to a blood clot in the pulmonary artery, resulting in decreased oxygenated blood supply to the body. The embolus responsible for blockage originates from the deep vein of the legs, breaks off, and then becomes lodged in a branch of the pulmonary artery. Symptoms include difficulty breathing, tachycardia, coughing up of blood, and the chest pain is one-sided. To diagnose pulmonary embolism, we use the modified Wells criteria. If the patient presents with clinical signs and symptoms of DVT, we add three points. If any other diagnosis is unlikely, another three points. If there is a history of pulmonary embolism or DVT in the patient, 1.5 points. If the heart rate is greater than 100 beats per minute, 1.5 points. History of recent surgery or immobilization warrants another 1.5 points and then one point each for hemoptysis and cancer. A score greater than four means a high suspicion for pulmonary embolism, and a CT pulmonary angiogram is done to confirm the diagnosis and locate the embolism. A score equal to or less than four indicates a low suspicion for pulmonary embolism, so D-dimer levels are first checked to confirm suspicion. If D-dimer levels are high, we proceed to CT pulmonary angiogram. Apart from pneumonia and pulmonary embolism, pleuritic pain can just be musculoskeletal pain that arises due to trauma. Examination would reveal localized tenderness, but diagnosis is only made after other causes are excluded. Chest pain may also arise due to infection of the gallbladder, known as cholecystitis. The infection usually occurs due to blockage of cystic duct by the gallstones. The cystic duct connects the gallbladder to the common bile duct. The infection can also spread into the peritoneum to cause peritonitis. Symptoms of cholecystitis include pain in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen, precipitated by eating fatty foods. Diagnosis can be made by an ultrasound of the abdomen, such as this one, which reveals gallstones at the neck of the gallbladder. Care should be taken during the ultrasound as pressing the probe over the area of the gallbladder can elicit the Murphy sign. When the patient is instructed to breathe in, abdominal contents, including the inflamed gallbladder, move downwards as normal and come into contact with the ultrasound probe. This causes patient to wince and catch their breath. ERCP, short for endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, also reveals gallstones in the biliary tract. As big as the name sounds, the procedure itself is actually easy to understand. A dye is injected into the biliary tract through its opening in the duodenum, which allows us to visualize the biliary tract and check for any obstructions. Lastly, chest pain is also caused by gastroesophageal reflux disease, in which acidic stomach contents reflux into the lower esophagus due to a weakened open sphincter. Symptoms include retrosternal burning and regurgitation of food. To diagnose, 24-hour pH monitoring is done, as the pH of lower esophagus is expected to be lower than normal due to the acidic stomach contents. An endoscopy with biopsy may also be done to check for any complications such as ulcers. With that, we've covered all the causes of chest pain and how they can present in a patient and how to diagnose them. I hope this video has been helpful. My next video will be about the various diagnoses of edema and their presentations. Stick around because there is more to come on scaria.com.